We are a tiny speck, but we are here. We are conscious, and I think that is, in and of itself, makes us significant in the universe. The perfection I found, especially in the formation of Earth, the formation of life, that's the amazing part of uh, the thing. Hello and welcome to Qatar 365 with me, Laila Humaira. In this episode, we blast off not quite to space, but to some places around Qatar to learn more about how the country is educating the public about space science and astronomy. But first, we begin here at the Al Turaya Planetarium, where the Qatara Space Science Program has been launched to make the study of the cosmos more accessible and engaging for students. It follows the Earth in its orbit around the Sun, but stays the same distance, about a million miles out. That's former NASA Chief Technologist Jim Adams giving a presentation about the James Webb Space Telescope to a packed auditorium. He's also given lectures on space weather, NASA's Artemis program, and moon missions, which have been a hit with students. The Katara Space Science program takes students out of their classrooms to a place that's as close as they can get to outer space. The Alturaya Planetarium is filled with educational displays and memorabilia about space exploration and the solar system that will hopefully ignite their curiosity to infinity and beyond. The program is only in its third month, but organizers say registrations have skyrocketed from the first edition. The best thing is uh, in the beginning of this uh, session, we had around four, uh, plus 400 participants. In the second session also, it was more than 500. This time, this is the record breaking that we have around 600 participants. While Jim runs space programs for youth all over the world, he gravitated towards Qatar, pulled by its large population of bright young minds. I think Qatar has um, a fantastic, untrapped genius in their youth. And if we can start encouraging them to consider STEM careers, that's science, technology, engineering, and math, then they can contribute to the global genius that needs to be applied to, you called it a space race, so globally there's a space industry. And everybody can play a part in that. And Jim means everyone, even artists like Aparna Mangalav Vijayakumar. This painting titled The Timekeeper's Galactic Journey, which is a surrealistic uh, space uh, fantasy. So I represented this as a, this hourglass as a time travel, the space journey through the ages. For the most anticipated activity of the day, the students had to wait for the sun to set. They're learning how to make a telescope from everyday materials. Unfortunately, it's a bit too cloudy for stargazing today. But beyond learning about space science, Jim hopes the students will also bring home the wisdom of how no individual is too small to make an impact on humanity and the world. Well, I think that it's an amazing universe. And I think that that gives us hope about what there is to study and understand our place in the universe. And yes, we are a tiny speck, but we are here. We are conscious, and I think that is, in and of itself, makes us significant in the universe. Well, another individual many students in Qatar look up to is Dr. Khaled Al-Ali, entrepreneur, deep tech visionary, public speaker, and not to mention so far, the only Qatari to have worked at NASA, Dr. Khalid's eclectic career has taken him down many different paths that all lead to one thing, exploring the unknown. I caught up with Dr. Khalid to find out more about the zest for knowledge and learning. Dr. Khalid, thank you so much for joining us here at Alturaya Auditorium. Firstly, I wanted to start with your interesting backstory about how your passion for space first ignited. Can you tell us about that story? Uh, my passion for space started a very, very long time ago when I was a young boy. I was about 10, 11 years old. My mother wakes me up one evening and she says, come, come, come and say hi to the guests. We went downstairs, all these guests are there, and there you was. 
I instantly recognized him because he was the first American to go to space, one of the first seven astronauts to be selected for the space program in the United States, and uh, one of the people who walked on the moon. The most exciting part about the encounter was the effect it left on me. Before uh, we parted ways, he said, uh, not even the sky is the limit. Follow your ambition. And from that moment, my gaze, which was at, aiming at the horizon, went from this way all the way to the stars, and I haven't looked back since. You went on to spend 10 years at NASA where you accomplished many things. What were some of the highlights? Some of the highlights were the design and build of a, uh, a robot that goes to the moon. I'm still the only Qatari to, to work at NASA and, uh, and uh, the only one to have flown spacecraft uh, with NASA. We did some also cool, cool things, uh, such, that, such as uh, investigating, uh, hibernating humans for long-term space travel. And if we're planning to send humans out there, we have to find ways to uh, have humans last long enough, either through hibernation, multi-generational ships, and so forth. We're the ones that bridge the gap to reduce the risk. We were flying AI-powered drones back in 2003. Now we're hearing about it. So now just count how many years it's been. It's been 20 some years, right? That's, right, that's a great example. The study of the stars plays quite a significant role here in Qatar. Can you explain to us the cultural and historical value of looking at the stars in the region? We are a culture that uh, historically is tied to the sea. Celestial objects are critical for navigation. The idea being that we have stars that appear in different locations based on the seasons, based on time of day and so forth, allows humans to achieve more than, just like any tool, whether it's navigation, whether it's predicting the seasons, when to harvest and so forth. Currently, the global space race has a few key players with one clear leader in SpaceX, which has completely changed the game. How do you see the space industry evolving or continuing to evolve over the next few years? So, the space race started uh, in the last century and it was uh, under governments basically uh, competing with each other with uh, Russia and the US being the most prominent and then there's talk about a private private entities building space stations and this transformation is bringing private resources and financing into the space mix and as such uh, driving also profit motive because we're getting more crowded in the orbit space law has to keep up because with commerce coming in, they're going to take risks because if there's too much regulation, there is no advancement. At the same time, balance that out with the extreme risk involved in space. There's lots and lots of, it's, it's a very risky endeavor. Well, while most of us marvel at the stars above, how many of us can tell Jupiter from Venus? Joanna Hu's joined a Doha-based astrophotographer who has invested in some heavy-duty hardware to get a clearer picture of the celestial activity above. As the sun sets over Qatar, Rizwan Ahmad is gearing up for a long night out in the sticks. Armed with his telescope and a range of other rather intimidating-looking equipment, the amateur astrophotographer is hoping to take that perfect picture and be transported through his lens to another world or galaxy. Astrophotography actually is uh, taking picture of celestial body. So it can be divided in few things that solar system astrophotography, Milky Way astrophotography, and then deep sky astrophotography. Deep sky is a little advanced. Solar system also require a big focal length bigger telescope because the plants are very tiny but Milky Way photography that can be done with simple equipments like DSLR camera so if you want to start in an astrophotography you don't need a fancy equipment to start with. An astrophotography enthusiast by night during the day Rizwan works in the steel industry originally from India his fascination with the wonders of the universe started in Qatar in 2015 when he gifted his daughter a telescope for her birthday. Lots has changed since that first time he pointed his lens at the sky, not least his knowledge on what he is actually looking at. Astrophotography is uh, itself a study. Before uh, you shoot something, you got to know what type of nebula, what type of object it is. I try to figure out the different constellations, I learn the, the gases, how the stars are formed, and yeah, definitely a very educational journey. 
I've come to keep Rizwan company on his latest excursion to the desert, as this is a passion that requires patience. Even though the sky is quite literally the limit in astrophotography, capturing celestial bodies on camera can take anywhere from hours to days, even years. And even then, you're not guaranteed to walk away with a spectacular shot. Actually, astrophotography is you are collecting photons from a celestial body. So amount of photons you get in a specific time is the time you need to uh, complete a picture. Some targets, they are so bright, you can finish in one hour. I did a picture of, a, it's called squid nubula. It's so faint that it's been discovered recently in 2011. It took me two years. I was proud of that image, yeah. it was so beautiful. The desert skies and Qatar's relatively little light pollution offer Rizwan a helping hand, but even in the perfect weather conditions, astrophotography is by no means an easy hobby. That doesn't deter Rizwan though, who is committed to keep shooting the stars, as for him, the splendors of space make it all worth it. The perfection I found, especially in the formation of Earth, the formation of life, that's the amazing part of uh, the thing. The universe is so vast, so vast, that uh, visible sky has 15 billion galaxies. So if you divide that galaxy to the human population, every person will get, I think, eight or nine galaxies. And that uh, visible sky is just a small part of the universe. It's amazing, actually. While the global space race is heating up, Qatar is focused on educating the next generation of space scientists and igniting the spark in the minds of future astronauts. We hope you've enjoyed stargazing with us, but that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out yournews.com and connect with us through our hashtags. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.